In this podcast, I want to um, focus on the concept of focus. Really interesting book I came across uh, about a month ago. It's called Stolen Focus, um, Why You Can't Pay Attention and How to Think Deeply Again. And it talks about how, you know, um, really our attention is being hacked. Things on social media are very, very powerful. And there's methods behind uh, what's on social media, Instagram, TikTok, all those things to grab a person's attention and to keep them engaged in that process. Anyway, it's a really good read. Um, the author is Johan Hari. And just, and again, the, the point of this book is to dive a little bit deeper into what's really going on, why the rising generation is increasing in anxiety, uh, finding meaninglessness, in life because we're being hacked in a way to think very shallow, um, quickly looking for quick solutions. We're not being taught to think deeply, to focus, and to really be able to make a difference in the world, to find our purpose, and to um, focus on becoming who we want to become. One of my all-time favorite quotes um, comes from the playwright George Bernard Shaw, where he says, Life is not about finding yourself, it's about creating yourself. I really believe that. We all come across many different experiences in life and are influenced by things, people, but at the end of the day, we have the capacity to choose for ourselves where we want to go. Um, three books in particular today, besides that one I want to talk about. Total Focus, Brandon Webb, uh, former Navy SEAL, and these two, these two books, Steve Jobs and Phil Knight. Autobiography by Steve Jobs and then Phil Knight wrote, wrote this book about history and Nike. So Apple and Nike, two of the most influential companies in history that have impacted all of us. How did that happen? I want to uh, talk about a concept in Steve Jobs' books where, where those who were around him um, came up with this concept, said that he, that he has this thing called a reality distortion field around him. Let me just read a little, little paragraph of that. Um, and so they, they tell other people about it, that there's something about this guy um, that he just makes things happen. And I'll just read a paragraph. And, and you'll just have to fill in the blanks. And at first, Hertz, Hertzfeld thought that Tribble was exaggerating, but after two weeks of working with Jobs, he became a keen observer of the, phen of the phenomenon. The reality distortion field was a confounding melange of a charismatic rhetorical style Indomitable, indomitable will and eagerness to bend any fact to fit the purpose at hand. And it basically means that he um, had the capacity to influence others to get things done. He was 100% focused on, on the mission of Apple. And the thing that's so similar to Phil Knight is that he was 100% focused on his mission. They weren't distracted in other areas. It's like in the story, and, and you know, um, Steve was, a, was an amazing, amazing man, but also was very difficult to work for. And as many recall that he was actually fired from the company he created because it was so difficult for many to work with. And when that happened, the, the company just went stagnant. How they have been so, so influential and stuff, it, it didn't happen anymore. And after a number of years, they figured, what do we do? And they brought him back. And the first thing that, that Steve did was he looked at how the company was allocating their resources, called resource allocation. Where's all the time and energy going? 
this person was doing this. And anyway, it, there were too many things going on. He wasn't focused. And so his, the first thing he did was he said, we're cutting this out, this, 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 this. We're getting back to these things right here. And then the company started to take off again. And so resource allocation as it relates to these guys, and it's the same thing with, with Phil Knight. He was absolutely obsessed with shoes. As the story goes, he had an assignment um, uh, finishing his graduate degree or his degree, I'm not sure if it was the graduate, anyway, finishing his degree at Stanford. And the assignment, um, he just did it on shoes. And he said, and, and in that process, it became an all out obsession. So, and Brandon Webb, a Navy SEAL, talks about the same thing that in order to get things done, there must be intense focus and recognizing through what he calls total situational awareness when distractions are coming and how to quickly get back on task. Now, as that, that relates to us, okay, this whole concept of mindfulness, from my perspective, mindfulness is simply the capacity to bring a wandering mind back to quality thoughts over and over and over again. But in order for the mind to come back to something, we have to create that. So we have to create our own vision statement, our purpose, our ethos, um, because if we, don't, if we don't know where we're going, if we don't know what we're striving for, um, then any direction is, is okay. But you know, there's also another amazing book out. It's been out for a while. The One Thing by Gary Keller, same concept. It says if, if you focus on, I think the beginning quote of that book, so if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch neither one of them. But it's, it, it's a great um, reminder for all of us to, first of all, one of the first orders of business for any of us is to try to find our purpose or to create it or something we dream about. And that is going to be an ongoing process. Um, another fantastic book. Um, by Clayton Christensen. He was a Harvard business professor. He wrote a book entitled, How Will You Measure Your Life? Or How Will Your Life Be Measured? Anyway, some just really cool things in there. So in, in my process of studying and working with clients, we come across these two concepts. One is called deliberate practice. That those, I mean, who wrote that book? Peak is another, another book. Peak by Anders Ericsson. And he talked about those who are extremely successful, that they do certain fundamental things over and over and over again until they just become excellent at it. It's like, a, it's like a, an athlete, professional athlete or an Olympian who does um, the fundamental things over and over and over again with their skill set where they become absolutely the best of, of what they can be. That's deliberate practice when you're doing something that that actually is paying off and it's working. Now there's other concept called emergent, um, an emergent mindset, meaning that sometimes, so we got to start somewhere. So we're going on a journey. The, uh, the, um, so we have to, you know, plan and plan and plan of what it is we want to become, set our vision statement. But another thing that I've read in, in many authors of military books, they, they, they say something like, no plan ever survives contact with the enemy. That means no matter what we set forth to do, there's gonna be obstacles along the way. And sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to. Usually that's the case. So we learn to adapt, improvise, overcome by incorporating that mindful warrior mindset, can do, um, sense of humor, zero victim ment mentality, and I will not focus on negative things. I will continue to push forward, notwithstanding um, the, uh, the challenges that I face, because I know I have the capacity to deal with it, and I will figure out a way, somehow, some way. The best is yet to come. And, um, you know, obstacles are simply opportunities to grow. 
But as, as um, the emergent thing happens, that here's, here's the story of Clayton Christensen, what he tells. He says his dream was to become um, the editor of the Wall Street Journal. Okay, um, it simply never happened. He applied for it, he dreamed about it, but he never got a response from them. But in that process, he was led to becoming a professor, which he absolutely loved. And, and so when he talks about emerging, he says, yeah, you set your dream, you go forward with that, but be intelligent enough to know that as you are pushing forward, sometimes things change. And it's okay to be able to pivot and move in a different direction uh, because that's all life is. Things emerge and it's those emergent things when those opportunities present themselves. It's like when the wave comes, do you get on that wave or are you just waiting for that, that, that only one that you have said for yourself? See, so there's two different mindsets that you, you, you hear many say, don't ever give up, never surrender. There are times when wisdom speaks, it, no, it's time to surrender. It's time to pivot. It's time to do something else. I have learned enough. I am going to take all of the experience and information that I have gained in this straight line endeavor and I'm going to pivot just a little bit and use it. That is positive. That is good. That is using wisdom. So, and there's no simple answer to, to uh, figure that out. Every, it's called the speed of war, right? That's what the military person, speed of war means things constantly are unfolding as we are navigating through life. Every single day is a new day. So I love this statement by, or a quote by the Greek philosopher Heraclitus who says no man ever steps into the same river twice because it's not the same river and it's not the same man. I love the idea. It's a mindful warrior concept also. This is day one. We've never lived this day before. We don't know what's coming in the next hour or two. And it's like, ah, oh, there's a really cool quote too. Just just uh, popped into my mind. If I, could, if I can find it really, really quickly. It's like, all right, what did Marcus Aurelius said? He said, uh, here's one, this is a good one. A setback has often cleared the way for greater prosperity. Many things have fallen only to rise to more exalted heights. Anyway, that's not the specific, but that's a really good one. Oh, this is it. Here we go. The chance for progress to keep or lose turns on the events of a single day. To me, that's exciting. It, that's why we need to be mindful and aware, aware of our small and simple decisions, our small and simple choices. Is it important that I get up and exercise today? Yeah, it is. Is it important how I take care of my body today? Yeah, it is. Is it going to be okay if I, you know, just blow this off for a little bit? Well, there are just consequences, you know, small little decisions. I mean, compound interest, I guess, works both ways. The point being that every day is a new day. And no matter where we find ourselves and how, how we have gotten maybe um, stuck, wrapped up in too much anxiety, depression, addiction, keep trying. Today's a new day. Read, learn from other people's experiences when you are doing something. And this is where the power of reading comes in. It's also Jim Mattis, okay, Secretary of Defense. Um, he, he, he says this about reading, okay? If you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate. And you will be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to sustain you. A commander who claims that he is too busy to read is going to fill body bags with troops as he learns the hard way. So, as we struggle in life, let's learn from other people. Learn what they've been through. We have in our brains these things called mirroring neurons. And though we see with our eyes and we can mirror and pick things up, when we read, it causes us to think deeply. Reading is almost a lost art. 
one of the recent um, stats I read in, in the book Stolen Focus um, by Johan Hari, he says he asked 80 to 85% of high school students if they would read a book for pleasure, and they would say, are you kidding me? So Instagram, TikTok, or sitting down reading a book. See, one hijacks the brain in this endless thing of more, 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 faster, quick, flashy, and the other one, slow down, slow down, read, ponder, think about those things that are the most meaningful in your life. Anyway, just wanted to leave you with those uh, thoughts today. Last thought, I'll close with this. Cool little book also, C.S. Lewis, The Screw Tape Letters. Um, here's what it says. This, this, this fits into the law of compound interest. But no sort of action pleases hell so much as the easy road, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts, the host of little daily choices, which are molehills that turn into mountains. What hell wants is a man finally having to say, I now see that I spent most of my life in doing neither what I ought nor what I liked. Anyway, something to ponder.